Hallo meine Damen und Herren und herzlich willkommen in diese Train Sim World 2 Such nach Köln. That's about as good as my German's gonna get for this video. Welcome to Train Sim World 2. Today we are looking at Schnellfahrstrecke Köln, which uh, if I hadn't I just knocked the mouse off, there we go, we're gonna be looking at ICE3 and the Bombardier Talent. Two. Today we're going to be looking at the Bombardier Talent 2, of course, and um, for some reason in Transom World I've not quite figured out how to get around this, but when you click the route you want to do, it just begins a scenario, and you're like, I, I, don't, want to, I don't want to begin a scenario, I don't want to be here, let's go back to the main menu. That was wasting everybody's time there. Um, if you do know how to get around that in the comments, let me know. So now we're on the main menu where we actually want to be. Uh, we are going to be looking at the training module for the Bombardier Talent 2. We're going to be with Wolfgang Einbahnstrasse. Uh, that is uh, the name that I've given him. Roughly translated into English, that's uh, Wolfgang One Way Street. But I thought Einbahnstrasse sounds like a very, uh, very stereotypical German last name. So that's what he's called, Wolfgang Einbahnstrasse. He's going to be our instructor and throughout this he's going to talk over me. Uh, so when he's talking, I shall be quiet. And uh, here we go, talent to introduction. Take it away, Wolfgang. In your own time. Welcome to driver training here at Aachen Depot. Here you will be taken through the operation of a BR442 Talent 2 electric multiple unit. During this brief introduction, we will go through the train preparation, critical driving controls and passenger operations. When you are ready, climb aboard to get started. So, uh, so off we go, follow the markers onto the train. Uh, just before we do that, I mean, let's just look at this external model. I mean, it's, we should probably uh, look before we just step into a track, could have just been mowed down there. I mean, look at that external model, that is just absolutely beautiful. I'm a massive fan of the Bombardier Talent 2. It's a good looking train. Uh, nicknamed Hamster Cheeks because of the, uh, the, the this that's going on here. It looks like it's got uh, stuff stuffed in, food stuffed in its cheeks. And so without further ado, let's climb aboard. Uh, pop that, whoop, just shut the door in through me. In normal operation, this unit draws electricity from the overhead catenary via a pantograph. However, since the pantograph is currently in the down position, we have to power the initial systems by priming the auxiliary battery. I mean, just looking in the cab here, I, I really am so impressed with this. Uh, let's uh, pop the battery on. Hold for five seconds, and when the vault thing, there we go, that's on now, all is good. Take a seat in the driver's position. This is where you'll be. Oh, this is where you'll be spending most of your With time. With power available, use the master switch to unlock the control desk and turn on the multifunction displays. Uh, on. There we go. The reverser determines the direction of travel. We have a V and an R. R, I'm assuming, means reverse, and V, uh, forwards. That was a dreadful pronunciation, but German for forwards. Now activate the pantograph so that it raises up and makes contact with the overhead catenary. Can we can we uh, can we see this pantograph in action here? Will it will it work? How do we? Uh, where's the pantograph? There's a the pantograph. So let's uh, let's move there. Does it? Does, oh, it doesn't pop back. Uh, pantograph up quick. Ah, very nice. Uh, just sort of missed it. But there we go. Pop that closed. Set the exterior lights and, uh, for normal operation. The air conditioning system, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's just whirring in the background there now that we're with the pantograph. We'll set that. It wants us to pop it on high beam. Set the indirect brake to release. This brake is generally not required during normal operation, but can be used in cases of emergency. So I don't know uh, what you would uh, you would have that on if you were driving in real life. I know that, uh, I mean, high beam seems a little bit mm, dimmed beam, we're going to have that on. Uh, marker lights, obviously, I, I feel a bit weird just leaving them on. So we'll, we'll have dimmed beam, that seems like, for the daytime, an acceptable uh, release the brake. Finally, disengage the parking brake. There we Use go. Use the combined power brake handle to apply power and get going. So before we do actually get going, 
Um, I'm just going to flick to another video that I've just done. It's uh, a tiny little clip of uh, Trendsim 2020 and the Bombardier Talent 2 on there. Um, I never particularly uh, fancied this train uh, because I didn't think the physics were right. Take a look at this and see what you think. Yep, see what I mean there? It's just, it's a little bit quick, isn't it? A little bit, whoa, off you go, too fast. Uh, whereas from driving this, I can categorically say that the physics are just so much better. The sound's awesome as well. I mean, I'm usually very heavily critical of, uh, of dovetail games and the fact that sounds and physics. Is a method used to efficiently maintain speed there. and reduce motor stress and maintenance requirements. Yes. Well, I was talking there and you've just interrupted me. It's very rude. Uh, yeah, the uh, Dovetail games have never really been known for their uh, accuracy. The, the 3D models are always fantastic. Um, however, the... Uh, Apply a small amount of brake force to achieve a comfortable and safe stop. Yeah, they're always a little bit lacklustre in the physics and uh, the sounds department. And that's something that has been a theme all the way through Trendsim 2020. And to be honest with you, Trendsim World, I'm quite impressed with it. I, I really am. Are we going to stop? <laughs> Forget it's uh, a lot different to the Bakerloo line in that it's like a proper train and you have to uh, remember your physics a bit more. You can't just throw the anchors out at the last minute. Take a quick glance of the platform to ensure all is safe before unlocking the doors. We don't need to do that. And uh, again, the door sounds good. I mean, the Trendsim 2020 version didn't even have the uh, the alarm when the doors opened, whereas this does. I like that. It's uh, little little attention to detail, which they seem to be doing in Trendsim World 2. I mean, our lack of announcements still is an uh, irritant of mine, but, uh, but there we go. That's another conversation for another day. It's time to get going. Set the doors to locked. Proceed to the next stop at Aachen Rote Erde, unguided this time, and see how you get on. Now, uh, the door closing hustle alarm there Maybe it's different on different uh, Talent 2s, but the ones they have in Berlin, it doesn't sound at all like that. Uh, it's more of a, a, a quick beep. You know, if I, if I really had to pick faults with it. So we have a green signal, that's excellent. Uh, that, that's what we like to see when we're accelerating out of a station. I believe we would be in for, uh, for tea and biscuits with the management if, uh, if it was anything uh, other than a proceed aspect. So leaving Köln, we're now heading towards, uh, this is not Köln, uh, leaving Aachen, is it? Yeah, leaving Aachen, that's that's where we're going. Uh, we're now heading towards Aachen Rota Erde, which uh, is a little tiny two platform uh, sort of a deal, just outside the station, uh, just outside Aachen. Sort of like a Manchester Oxford Road, you know, it's, it's not quite Piccadilly, it's the, the crappy relation on the outside. You need to really watch your speed here, because uh, it's obviously trends in World 2, it's all done on a point basis, and if you go even the slightest bit over speed, uh, you, you get told off. So, uh, let's give it the beans. Get some accelerating. We want to arrive on time, after all. Uh, these uh, these Germans don't stand for any delay, and uh, we're we're not going to give that to them today. We're going to be on time and uh, whiz straight over. I'll just ease off, given we're on the uh, on the downhill ever so slightly. 
And uh, right, 600 metres away from the station, let's start braking. Uh, may have left it a little bit late there, so we might have to pop it in notch 6 for braking. We've got 10 notches for accelerating, 10 notches for braking. And uh, yeah, here we are. Aachen Rota Erde. And uh, if you don't come here for the train sim uh, content, you definitely come here for uh, me just badly pronouncing uh, foreign names. It's, it's, it's part of it. There we go. Oh, we're ever so slightly past our stop marker. But I'm sure we can cope with that. Steve's off for a nice gentle stop. And pop the doors open on the left. Should we, uh, should we have a look at our handiwork there? Smashing. No. Oh. And one of our colleagues next door. I know. Tag. Mine. Um, colleague? Colleague. I will assume that it's the same in, uh, in German that it is in English. Right, pop the door shut and, uh, and we'll take a seat. I don't know if he's going to want us to do any more, but we'll be ready and waiting. There we go. Good work. Uh -huh. That concludes that's, all of the basics it. of operating this train. Have we got a gold medal? Let's see. Uh, I can't think of anything I did particularly wrong. Um, give us that gold. It's not telling us. Okie dokie. Well, well, we'll go to the main menu. And, uh, and we'll see what the, uh, what the crack is there. Explore. Scenario. Nope, not scenario. Training. Uh, yes, we did, because we got more than 2,100 points. It's not my best score, but um, but yeah, okie dokie. Right, so we've done that. That's taken up uh, some of the time. But what we're going to also have a look at next, we're going to go on Talented Dakeover. So we are travelling uh, on this. It's roughly a 30-minute scenario. Difficulty 1 for easiness. Uh, we're going to be travelling on the RE9, the Regional Express 9 service operating to Aachen. Uh, so, here we go. Without further ado, let's crack on with it. Now, when you start, you always end up kind of stuck. Like, it comes up with a message telling you what to do in the bottom. Welcome to Duren. This is an RE9 service from Köln, calling at all stations to Aachen Hauptbahn. Open the doors to commence boarding. And you, you can move the, the mouse and look. It, it won't move. It, it kind of sit. Ah, there we go. He's, uh, he's released me. Pop the doors open on the right and uh, commence boarding. Now, with this being one of these uh, terrible, terrible uh, driver-only operated services, it's not that I'm biased, of course. Uh, we should probably have some sort of screenage or screenery uh, going on here, but we don't. Um, some have mirrors, we don't have those either, not to my knowledge. Uh, so I don't quite know how we're meant to check that everyone's boarding, but we're not going to. When he tells me in the top left hand corner it's time to go, then it's, uh, it's go time. Right here, lock doors, off we go. Stand clear everybody. Okie dokie, and uh, off we go. What sort of light setting have we got on the front? Uh, are they high beams? Just dimmed beam will suffice, thank you. And uh, we'll open the taps up. So out of Duran, the, uh, the speed limit is, we're going to go with 120. It's quite fast out of the station, 120 kilometres an hour. Uh, oh, hang on, no, it's not, it's dropping to 60. It's a good job we didn't uh, didn't accelerate too fast there. So, I mean, if you watch the Baker Lou Line video, you will uh, obviously be aware as to my resentment for this game. Uh, I resent buying a game and then been told, oh, that game's gone now. Uh, we're bringing out a, a new updated game and you have to pay again for it. I, I do resent that, I really do resent that, but do you know what, this is worth the money, especially if you can go on a website such as CD Keys rather than Steam, you can get this um, for £19.99, which I paid about £25 or something through Steam, so you can save £5 if you go via CD Keys, that's a Joe top tip for you there, always look at CD Keys before, uh, before looking at Steam there. 
can save yourself some money. Um, yeah, that's worth doing. Um, particularly given that it's about 20 quid per new route, that seems to be a dovetail games thing. New route, 20 quid, 25 quid. Uh, and if you do go via CD keys and manage to get this game for £19.99, then that's two routes you've got. I mean, you, the sand patch grade, that's just, I'm sorry, that's just American nonsense. I, uh, I can't be doing with American freight trains. They're just very slow and, you know, I like stuff like this, more fast paced, you know, scenery flying past the window. Love it. Um, trundling round American freight yards is not my thing. It's uh, something you probably won't see that much of, if at all, on this channel. Um, unless you want to see that, I mean, I am sort of your bitch in a way, if, if you want, the, you know, the viewers kind of dictate the content, don't they? Um, but yeah, American Freight Yards, not my thing, really not my thing here. But yeah, so for 1999, if we stop waffling and actually get to the point I was trying to make, you do get two fantastic routes. You get the Bakerloo line. Yeah, it's underground. It's not a particularly long route. It's, what, 14 miles long. Uh, but then this route is fantastic. I mean, I didn't really subscribe to the whole German routes thing in Trensit 1, but this is brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. It's such a nice route. Such a nice drive as well. Um, you're sharing. You've got... A, two different types of traction, you've got the ICE3M, yep, 3M, it's an ICE3 something, I think it's a 3M, and the Bombardier Talent 2, and this is about half an hour's drive, uh, the full route in an ICE takes about 40 minutes, and um, that's, uh, that's obviously going fast. So if you do the full route stop in, uh, we'll, we'll say 50 minutes to an hour, it's a good, good length of route. I've not actually done it yet, that's just a guesstimate. And obviously you've got your five scenarios that you tend to get, you've got all the um, all the timetable uh, gubbins that comes with it. So I would say, if you're getting it for 19.99, it is actually quite worth it. And don't just dig your heels in, if you are like me. Do, do just give in to what you want and, and buy this game, because <laughs> it's good. Plus, of course, there's all that legacy content nonsense. I don't really understand it, but if you bought the games for Trends in World 1, they appear here. Jolly good. Um, so, yeah. Rightio, let's uh, let's start thinking about braking. We're one and a half kilometres away from Langave. Again, if that's not the correct pronunciation, please do forgive me. Let me know in the comments uh, if there is... Uh, the correct pronunciation. We might need to start slowing down here a bit more. And I completely uh, skimmed over the 80 kilometers an hour speed limit which is happening in 400 meters. But I think we're going to be fine for that. And just ease off the brake and ever so slightly there. Ease off a little bit more. So I would assume that at this station given you've got the two through lines, a platform either side. We might be uh, waiting maybe, well our signal's green, but this is an ideal sort of station for us to be held for an ICE to, uh, to go belting past. It's not going to happen today obviously, but uh, yeah I could see that happening. It's a shame we don't have more of that over here, especially in the north. Yeah we've, we've missed our... Uh, we're, we're quite far past that, but it doesn't matter, we're all accommodated on the platform. And while we're here, uh, I'm just going to go into the settings because um, stop marker on... Um, is it stop marker we want off? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, so stop marker, we, we want that off because... Um, I don't mind the objective marker, but I don't like the, the red and orange and green like ghostly carriage markers in the track. I'm, I'm not keen on that. I mean, the first time I did this scenario, I got a gold medal for it. Um, because I managed to actually stop where it wanted me to stop. I don't think we're going to be that lucky today, to be honest with you. And uh, off we go. Are we ready? Oh, hang on. Sorry. Ah! Open the doors. Wait until 1930, he says. There we go. 
There's me getting a bit ahead of myself there. It's because I saw someone running down the platform. I was like, quick, shut the doors, off we go. It's, um, there's no greater thrill in life than, uh, than seeing someone miss the train. Just everyone loves seeing someone miss the train. Right, there we go, try again. Doors are closing. And there's a train conductor. It's very amusing when the train starts setting off and someone arrives at the station last minute. Like, oh, that kind of crushing disappointment that they've realised that they're not catching this train. It's, uh, it's what we all live for. There we go. For full power, give it the beans out of here. And uh, from personal experience travelling on these, I think that the sounds, they've really got that right on this. I mean, it's not often you'll hear me say that Dovetail Games have got it right. Now, I'm obviously someone that lives in Germany and travels on these every day. I might go, uh, no, the train is not good. It is missing a lot of the things. That's my, uh, that's my German accent there, in case you were wondering. Uh, but yeah, um, I think it's pretty good. I've been on these quite a bit whenever we go to Germany, and uh, I'm, I'm quite impressed. But again, maybe I'm just a tourist, and maybe I'm looking at it through rose-tinted glasses. I don't know. But yeah, I like this. So the next stop is... How on earth do you pronounce that? Eschweiler. Eschweiler. Hauptbahnhof. It's uh, quite a romantic sounding place, isn't it? Eschweiler. And uh, right, so we get to really give it the beans here. We're up to our full uh, top speed of this unit, which is 160 kilometres an hour, which uh, I'm now speeding. Too busy trying to pan round and, and talk, and this is probably why train drivers aren't allowed to uh, be on the phone in the cab or be making a YouTube video in the cab. Generally frowned upon. Uh, but yes, so 160 kilometres an hour, 100 miles an hour, and uh, as a regional train, absolutely fantastic. I uh, I would absolutely love to work something like this, but sadly. Uh, Trends in world is where it's uh, it's gonna have to be for now. So we're gonna pay attention to the uh, to the speed limit this time in the right-hand corner, 2.6 kilometres away from uh, from a 60 mile an hour zone. At 60 kilometres an hour, sorry, I do beg of your pardon. to be thinking about that. I think maybe 1.3 1. 1. kilometres away we might start slowing down. That That's sounding like... there we go. That's a good time, 1.4 kilometres. Start slowing down for that. slow down more than this. There we go, we'll take that off to about, what, six break in there? Can, do you reckon we'll make that? 60 kilometres an hour? Yeah, I reckon six should be enough. I know that last time I did this I was actually speeding into Eschweiler Hauptbahnhof. There we go, bit more, bit more. 60 kilometres an hour. Sensational. Yeah, I was actually speeding into this station because, again, I just didn't clock the... Uh, I find it quite difficult, um, Trends in World 2, in comparison to the likes of Trends in 2020. I liked having the, the little bar along the bottom which was telling you what's coming up. I find it difficult to be looking out the front, enjoying the scenery, whilst also looking down here at the speedo, whilst also looking up here at how long the next station is, whilst also looking up here as to when the speed... You know, you, you kind of have to have your eyes everywhere. Uh, and I do struggle with that on uh, on Trains in World 2. And Trains in World 1 was the same really, wasn't it? Come to a nice gradual stop. I think it, it kind of... I mean, Hauptbahnhof... I guess it's really main station, isn't it? Like, Haupt... Uh, 
I've completely forgotten what city is in German. I'm sure someone will remind me. Uh, but Haupt is like capital city, like Germany is the Haupt city. That's not what city is, but we'll, we'll call it the Haupt city. Ah, oh, look at that for a start. One meter, zero meters. That is about as good as it gets. Why can you not remember city? You did this at school. I guess when you go to Germany, you don't really feel the need to tell the German people that their capital city is Berlin. But you'd assume they already knew that. It's, uh, yeah. GCSE German and uh, what you actually need to speak in Germany are two very different things, aren't they? Um, Haupt is like, uh, yeah, so that's central. So, central station, you kind of have like Hauptbahnhof in Berlin, which has got like 8 billion platforms and has a shopping centre in it. And This is just a bit of a, yeah, it's a bit of a disappointment, isn't it? If anything, that's just like um, that place that begins with a G on the East Coast Main Line. Grantham. It's very Grantham-esque, isn't it, that? Maybe the curve's going the wrong way and the platforms are the wrong... You know, actually, it's not a bit like Grantham, but you know what I mean. It's not really like a Hauptbahn off, is it? Right, off we go again. Next stop is Stolberg, Rhineland Hauptbahnhof. Again, after the last Hauptbahnhof we've just been through, my expectations are a lot lower. Uh, but, yeah, fingers crossed, it will be a little bit more impressive. And I know we should probably stagger our uh, acceleration there, so it's a bit more of a comfortable ride for the passengers, but uh, they've not come here for comfort. If they wanted comfort, they would uh, stay at home in their nice comfy armchairs. They've come here to get from A to B on time, and uh, that's what we're going to give them. I always think uh, drive smoothly for passenger comfort is a bit of a, a laughable experience, sure, a, a laughable thing. Surely passengers want to be thrown around and feel like they're having the ride of their life. I mean, I do when I go on a train. Can't imagine anybody actually wants to be comfortable on a train. Especially with uh, the UK's new rolling stock, you can't possibly be com comfortable on, uh, on those seats. Ooh, controversial. Yeah, it's quite a hill out of, uh, up to Stolberg, isn't it? And uh, I don't quite know why we're... Oh, hang on. We're, uh, oh, we're speeding. That's my fault for not looking at, uh, at, the, at the speed limits again. I was too busy pondering why we're on a main line and we've got ground position light signals. Oh, hang on. We need to stop here. Oh, Christ. You see, this is, this is it. With I know that that's that marker right in front of me, but there's just too many things to be looking at and you can't possibly actually enjoy the... Uh, the ride while you're doing it. Yep, so as I suspected, uh, Stolberg Rhineland Hauptbahnhof is not particularly impressive either. I can't help but feeling we're coming into this station a lot slower than we should be. I feel you'd be a lot more impressed if we you know, bombed it into the platform and threw the anchors out at the last minute. But I'm that frightened of uh, flying over. Uh, what what have we got? Are we, oh, we're an eight car. Will stopping there fit us on the platform? Yes, it will. Right, okay, well, we're going to do that then. That's good enough. Right, we are stopped. Doors open. Come on, chop chop, board. We're uh, 25 seconds late now. It's due to me fannying around, even speeding, and we're somehow late. How did that happen? You, you see, that's just that's just fantastic, isn't it? Let's uh, let's have a. Can we can we have a screenshot? We'll print screen. That'll do. Oh, hang on, lock the doors, yeah. They're not going to shut on their own, are they? This is the wrong game if you're expecting the doors to be shut by the conductor. Off we go again. Next stop, Eilendorf. 
at uh, ah, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Hilarious. Isn't it nice when the time does that? It happens once a day, every day. It's even better when it's one, two, three, four, and fifty-six seconds. You know, it's just those little things in life that just make you happy. And that is one of them. Hell, it's a frequent service. There was a train in the platform then. There's a colleague there. Hello! No, no response. And, uh, right, giving it the beans up to 140 kilometres an hour now. I'm watching that speed limit in the top right like a hawk. There is no reduction in speed coming up that we can see. Uh, so we're, we're going to blast along. I'm determined we will be on time at the next station. I don't like running late. Right, okay, so we're going uphill, we'll leave a bit of power on there, just so we don't start losing power. And, uh, oh dear, that, uh, that track appears to be redundant now. You know what, maybe I'm slowing down a little bit too early. But you see, 1.5 kilometres, I really just don't want to overshoot the station. There we go, we'll pop four braking on. That seemed to be like the, the kind of, when you're one and a half kilometres away, pop four braking in, regardless of what speed you're at. That seemed to be kind of the, what I've got it down to is you will stop at the station. At least if, if we carry on, I mean we've got two minutes until we're due in, we're, uh, oh we've got loads of time, bags of time. There we go, that's a better stop. Coming into the station much quicker. Just to ease the brakes off a little bit there. Do you know what? Actually, no, let's, let's pop them back onto four. I feel we'd have quite a nice smooth stop there. Back up to two. So I guess when you're a driver that's been driving this route for, you know, many years of your life, you probably know the exact... Uh, pebble of ballast where you need to stick it in four brake or six brake and then not move the brake lever at all and come to a perfect stop uh, but sadly I am not one of those drivers that's a nice perfect stop we stopped exactly where we needed to and uh, see I don't get that why, why would it not tell me to stop a bit further down and then we'd, we'd all be on the platform I mean, you saw, I stopped where it told me to stop. If you don't believe me, go back and look. Uh, but, but yeah, hmm, how bizarre. I guess it's just one of those uh, Train Sim World 2 features that we'll never, we'll never uh, find an answer to. So, what do we do for two minutes then? Uh, think of something to talk about. Do you know what? Actually, we'll we'll just move it on. There we go. Now, uh, now wasn't that better than listening to me waffle on about some sort of rubbish for uh, for two minutes? So, ten seconds to go. Let's uh, let's get ready. I hope everybody's boarded. We've been sat here for what feels like a small eternity. There we go. All aboard. And, uh, oh, back to uh, our wonderful friend, Aachen Rotterde. I hope they're not all out with uh, torches and pitchforks, because I had uh, the audacity to insult them earlier, saying that they were kind of the, the crappy cousin to uh, Aachen Hauptbahnhof. See, I mean, we've, we've got that 
green signal with the white dot on top. And do you know what? I've got absolutely no idea what that means. I should probably uh, be the responsible person uh, and read the manual so that I kind of had a vague idea. German signalling just baffles me. It really does. Um, like I say, I should really read up on it as to what it means. But, you know, yeah, that's how we roll. See, that said 12 on it. I'm assuming that means that we're going to go down to 120 kilometres an hour shortly. It might mean that. It might not. Yeah, but yeah, I should really read up on the signalling system. Especially if I intend to drive more routes around here. I mean, we're well under 120 kilometres an hour, because obviously we're stopping at uh, Aachen Rotha, Rotha Erde, sorry, Aachen Rotha Erde. It's a brilliant language, isn't it, German? Very aggressive. We're going a little bit fast now. We're going a lot, to a lot fast. Nope, keep it on eight braking because we're going to go whizzing past that stop marker. Oh well, we're accommodated on the platform. That's all that matters. And doors are open. Seven seconds late. How did that happen? So that to me is just a timetabling uh, fault there. Because why would we have all that time sat at uh, at that last place whose name I've forgotten, and then uh, and then this is like rushing round like headless chickens. I think they could kind of adjust the timetable in there so that we arrive early everywhere. Uh, lock the doors, right? Okie dokie. Again, there could be someone trapped in the doors. We don't know. Maybe I'm missing something glaringly obvious there, maybe, maybe there's a button, but he didn't teach us that in the tutorial, so, uh, you know, he said have a quick glance at the platform. I mean, I'm a train driver, I can't be getting off my seat to go and look out the window. That's what conductors are for. And, of course, if you're uh, in driver-only operation land, that's what screens are for. You know, they can't be expected to actually get up off my bottom and go and check. If there's any train drivers watching, yeah, I went there. I said that. Should be quite happy, actually. It's uh, it's that attitude that keeps me in a job. Ah, oh, one of the glorious ICEs. It doesn't matter what your opinion is uh, on trains, whether you're a train geek, whether you're not a train geek, uh, you can appreciate how nice those ICEs look, they just look absolutely fantastic. And uh, yeah, that little number under the signal, there you go, so it's 4 in yellow, and we're going to 40. Don't know what the flashing green means, no idea. Maybe it means the next one's a yellow, who knows? Uh, but yeah, so the, the number under the signal, as it turns out, is what speed is going to be happening shortly. Uh, so here we go, arriving into Aachen Hauptbahnhof, which is significantly more of a Hauptbahnhof than, uh, than the rest of the sorry excuses for Hauptbahnhofs we've seen in this video. Very Bristol Temple Meads-esque because it's got a canopy and it's on a curve, that means it's exactly like Bristol. Uh, so yeah, here we are approaching the end of the video, our terminus station. Uh, so please, if you've enjoyed the video, do give it a like, click that like button. Uh, subscribe, very shortly if it hasn't already, there'll be a little button in the middle of the screen to click and subscribe, nice and easy for you. The right hand side will be the Trends in World playlist, if you like Trends in World related things. And on the left, um, that could be a load of nonsense. That's what YouTube thinks you might want to watch from my channel. So uh, if it's not tailored to you in the slightest, then don't shoot the messenger. That's just what YouTube told me would happen. Uh, 
and we're going to spad if we're not careful. There we go. And so yes, thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you next time. Cheerio!